This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Computers have come a long way since they were just oversized calculators. In the old days, and by old days I mean just a few years ago really, if you wanted to create a panorama, you only had a few choices. You could have one of the really expensive cameras that could shoot one for you, or you could take a series of individual images and manually stitch them or position them together. Now, that technology has gotten a lot better. Now, Photoshop Elements can do it for you. We're going to use the Greek panel images, one, two, three, and four. These are all taken at the Greek section of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. This is a Greek sculpture, and it's really pretty tall. So it was hard to take it and get the detail I wanted as a single shot. So instead I took a series of four shots, each one slightly overlapping the last. I can then use the photo merge effect in the elements organizer to merge them all into one piece. I'm gonna select all four images. I'm just clicking on the first one, holding down the command key on my keyboard. If you're a PC user, you'd wanna hold down the control key. Selecting the other three images, and then in the organizer, I choose File, New, Photo Merge. Notice there are several different choices here. Photo Merge began as only a panorama effect. Now, it's been expanded into several other areas. In this chapter, we're gonna cover three of the different photo merges, though they all function very similarly to each other. So I choose Photo Merge Panorama. This is gonna open the Photoshop Elements Editor. It's gonna bring in all of these images I had selected, and open the Photo Merge dialog box. First, I need to choose what files to add. I'm gonna to choose to add open files. This is gonna bring in all of the images that I had selected in the organizer. Then I have to choose a layout format. You'll notice there's auto, perspective, cylindrical, spherical, collage, reposition, interactive layout. Now, for most situations, auto, which allows the application to figure out the arrangement itself, is going to be the quickest and easiest effect. If you know the type of photo merge you want to create, like you know that the perspective needs to be adjusted, then you may want to choose one of the specific layout formats. But really, for most people, most situations, auto will solve the problem for you. At the bottom of the photo merge panel, there are several options. Blend images together, very helpful because it merges the images together so that they have a seamless blend. Vignette removal is helpful if your images have vignetting, those dark edges at the corners of a photograph. And geometric distortion correction is designed to correct lens distortion. I don't need either of those, so I'm gonna leave the defaults and press OK. And then it's simply a matter of sitting back and waiting for the program to analyze your image. It's gonna bring them all into one document, merge them all together so that you have one seamless image. This process takes as long as it takes, honestly, we're basically asking Photoshop Elements to analyze an entire image. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Some images will run very quickly, others not. Once you have created the panorama, you have the ability to clean up the edges. And this is a really helpful feature. It asks you if you'd like to fill in the edges of your panorama automatically. Yes, why not? If you don't like it, you can always remove it. The document created is called Untitled Panorama. I'm gonna choose Consolidate All so I can display the images in a tabbed layout with my currently active image first. Now the automatic fill command that filled in the sides and top of the image, sometimes it works really well. Other times it doesn't work quite so well as you can see here. This really isn't the best example of it, but sometimes it can be helpful. It doesn't really cost you anything other than additional time usually. If you look at the document, you'll notice that this new document is made up of the four original layers plus the consolidated layer. I'm gonna turn that off. That leaves us with only the individual panel layers themselves. And if I click the visibility of them off, you can actually see where each image is being used. I'm gonna activate my zoom tool. Now the really interesting thing is that we know that this is where these three panels join. But even when zoomed in, it's really hard to find that merge line. 
This photo merge effect feature does a really excellent job of creating nearly seamless or seamless panoramas for you. I'm going to zoom out. That's command zero or control zero. Now, since the automatic fill didn't really accomplish what I was looking for, I'm just going to delete that layer one. That was that fully merged, finished, filled in image. And what I'd like to do is use my crop tool. And I'm going to crop out the excess parts of the image. The crop can be rotated. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that it matches closer to the shape of the panorama itself. And really all I'm trying to do is eliminate this excess background here. So not bad. I'm just going to double click inside of my crop box. That'll complete the crop. And we'll have a new panorama without any of that excess transparent background. Not bad. It looks very good. It's very much like I remember it from my trip to the museum. I'm going to save this file. File, save as. I'm going to call it Greek Panorama. And I'm actually going to save it to my desktop. I'm not going to save it to the working files folder. Click OK. Excellent. And you can return to the Photoshop Elements Organizer from the editor by clicking on the Organizer button in the upper right hand corner. Excellent. You'll notice that each of these files has edit in progress and a banner across the middle. This is because you can't work with files that are currently being edited. Once I close them in the editor, they'll be accessible here again. So what I would just do is switch back to the editor, close the files, and then we can continue with working with these if we wanted to or move on to another one. So back in the editor to close those files, it's simply file close all. The files will close and then you can return to the organizer without a problem. Excellent. And now you'll notice that these files no longer say edit in progress because they've been closed. When using the photo merge panorama effect, what you'll notice is that the better the individual images are, the better the overlap is, the better the finished panorama will be. You do need to have a certain amount of overlap from image to image. If you don't, it won't be able to figure out where they should join together. I've used that photo merge effect for landscapes, for artwork like this. It'll work on landscapes and anything that requires a really wide vista to work. I've also used it on sculptures and on statues and other things that really would make it very difficult to see details by just taking a single shot. It works really well. I even used it at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. to capture the 30-foot relief sculpture of the Gettysburg Address. It can be a really cool, really effective technique.